Okay, so now we're going to look at differentiating, differentiating curves parametrically. Right, so we've got x equals 1 minus 8 cos 2t. So we're going to differentiate each of them separately. Now remember with your trig, sine differentiates to cos, which differentiates to minus sine, which differentiates to minus cos. And if you want to integrate, you go round the circle the other way. If you have a value, so if you have any trig identity and something x, so for example, with sine ax, when you differentiate that, that a comes in front and the sine in this case becomes a cos. So dx dt is going to give me 16 sine 2t. And dy dt is just going to give me 9 cos t. And if I want dy dx, I have to do dy dt multiplied by dt dx, which is the sine 2t flipped over. So essentially, I put the one with the y on the top and the one with the x on the bottom. Right. So now we could, um, we've got it, we've got there, and now we want to know what happens when x equals 5, because we need a t value to substitute into there. So when x equals 5, we get 5 equals 1 minus 8 cos 2t. So that gives us cos 2t equals minus a half. We want to be in radians. Have a look at your um, range, your domain, or your values of t that you need. So inverse cos of minus a half is going to give you 2 pi by 3. So t is going to give you pi by 3. Now we substitute that in. When t equals pi by 3 dy and when they're asking for an exact value sometimes if you type it all into your calculator in one go it doesn't necessarily give you the right answer you probably need to do both bits separately right so on the top you're going to get 9 over 2 and on the bottom you're going to get 16 div um, so you're going to get 6 16 times by root 3 over 2 so you're going to get root um, you're going to get 8 root 3, right, which is going to leave you with 3 over 16 root 3. Now, um, you would, might have to do that, like I said, depending on how your calculator gives it to you, you might have to do that in bits, um, but your calculator should give you 3 root 3 over 16 or so on, so then you know your k is 3 sixteenths. Okay, the next bit of this question, use some more trig, it says show that all points on C will satisfy y equals 9 over 4 root x plus 7. So let's remind ourselves we had x equals 1 minus 8 cos 2t and y equals 9 sine t. Whenever you have to find a Cartesian, what you have to do is make the trig identical identity bits, so the cos, the sine, the cos 2d, the subject of each formula. So we're going to rearrange this first one to be cos 2t is equal to 1 minus x over 8, and sine t is the same as y over 9. And then you say what formula connects cos 2t with sine? And we know that cos 2t can be written in three ways. One of them is 1 minus 2 sine squared t. And we substitute in. So 1 minus x over 8 equals 1 minus 2 y over 9 squared. And so we want to make this y the subject of the formula. It's only one mark for all the manipulation. So don't spend too long playing with it. So we've got 1 minus x, so we'll have 1 minus x over 8, equals 1 minus 2, and this is going to give you y squared over 81. Okay, so we'll have this, um, so when we do that, we can then multiply up some stuff, so if I Put the y's onto the left hand side i'm going to have 2 over 81 y squared um equals 1 
if I split that up, minus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8x. Right, they don't have any denominators, so we're going to multiply, I guess, everything by... We want to end up with 4 on the bottom. So if we multiply everything by um, 2, which should be all right there. Okay, I'm not sure what they've done. So if we do one, okay, so if we do one take away one over eight, we've got seven over eight plus one over eight x. Um, and that, and so y squared will be all of that multiplied by 81 over two. Um, so you get y squared equals seven over eight times by 81 over 81 over 2 which is going to give you 5 6 7 over 16 plus 81 over 16 x and we want to take 9 out of 4 out so that's actually taking 81 out of 16 out of the bracket so because we're going to take the square root of it, which is going to leave us with, inside a bracket, before we square root, so it's not square root, x plus 7, and then we take the square root of that, and we get the answer. It's a bit long, and I've, you'll probably be able to manipulate it quicker, but that's the, the marks of 4, recognising the identity, substituted in, and then all the manipulation is only worth a mark. So if it's taking you a long time, just leave it. Okay, so that's part B. Part C says A and B are constants to find the value of them. So what A and B is is the values of X. So we want to know that value there and as it goes upwards. So if we have a look at this, what do we know we can never have a square root of? So we can never have a root of a negative number. So that means in if I had minus seven as x, it will become zero, which is fine, but I can't have anything less than that. So that tells me a must be minus seven. And in order to find b, we need to go back to our values here, or our equation here, and our t is between zero and pi over two. So if we think about it, what is the maximum that cos 2t can be? So the maximum it can be is 1, the minimum is minus 1. So if we have 1 minus 8, that's the minus 7, which we already have. And if we had minus 1, eight minus 8 times minus 1 gives you plus 1. So we end up with b equaling 9. So you've got to think what's the maximum and the minimum that trig identity can be. So that's going to be my values of A and B. And to find my range, well, I know the bottom side is zero. I need to find what my maximum Y can be. Again, the maximum sine T is one. So my maximum Y will be nine. So I'm gonna write zero is less than or equal to F of X is less than or equal to nine. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you've got any questions, 